So welcome to week nine of the 2020 Web Center Olympics. You know, we've had so many great topics over the past couple of weeks on really how to develop a strong Web Center business, talking about how to develop candidates, how to do your research and really dig in for information, how to contact and approach business owners to schedule that consultation, and then follow that up into a, a demo appointment with the product specialist. We even talked about some of the advanced tips on scheduling appointments, and then we talked a, a little bit more specifically about the follow-up process, how to leverage some of the tools and resources like the bundled packages. But this evening, we're going to talk more specifically about the challenges, right? Handling objections and handling questions as they come up through the process. In some cases, these will happen very early on when you're first contacting a business, all the way through when you're going to really try and close the sale. So it might happen at different times, but the fact of the matter is, is that this is a, an area that is going to happen. You are going to have gatekeepers. You're going to run into voicemails. You're gonna run into some objections. So we're gonna talk about how to handle some of those this evening. Um, but the most important thing to realize is that we're dealing with people. So there is no perfect answer. There is no script. There's no 100% uh, way that you can address everything, but I will tell you this, through your experience, you will improve. So the more business owners that you speak with, the more questions that you get, the more presentations that you're on, you will refine your skill in handling objections. But the most important thing we've gotta always come back to is that the most important um, part of this entire business is the one-to-one -one marketing or ultimately the relationship, right? It's gotta be a win-win or no deal at all, right? So relationship first, and that really is the first key to retailing, right? So building strong relationships and through conversing with people, you're going to identify a need, a want, a pain, or a desire, and then offer a solution. And as we know, we're not trying to pitch or promote a product or service, all we're simply doing is scheduling an appointment, right? Scheduling an appointment, whether you are a web center professional and you are conducting the appointment, or you're scheduling an appointment with a product specialist, it doesn't matter. The solution is the appointment because that's when we get to tell the story and stories sell products. So you might be new and not have any client testimonials or case studies. So you wanna leverage the third party uh, testimonials and case studies that we provide to you. You want to stay engaged in the Web Center Owner Support Group. There's a lot of clients that have been onboarded and launched even just recently, and there's lots of great questions. And if you're looking for a specific case study, just ask, right? In that forum, we have the top Web Center owners and Web Center trainers that will engage with you and let you know their best practices or if they've got a success story. We also have many that are on our YouTube channel and our blogs. Uh, we do a, a focus on our designs. You can also follow us on social channels like the Web Center Facebook page and Instagram channel. And we've got so many resources that you get to leverage as your own story. Remember, this is a partnership, right? A true partnership between Mark in America, MA Web Centers, and you. Um, so you get to leverage all of it, right? You get to leverage the bigger... Um, uh, base of people, the other web center owners and their success stories as well. And of course, as you build up your own candidates, turning into clients, you're going to have your own success stories and that you can leverage and, and work with as well. So you always want to collect and use testimonials. And most importantly, we know the fortune is in the follow-up. So you need to have a follow-up system in place, right? How are you following up with those candidates that you just couldn't schedule an appointment with? Or how are you following up with those candidates that you had a consultation with, but couldn't close them to a product demo? Or how are you following up with those people that had a demo, but timing wasn't right? Or building share of customer, how do you uh, go about communicating with these individuals? Because ultimately, you are looking to provide lifetime customer value, right? You want to provide that client uh, the best of service, and you always want to be engaging with them and their business to make sure that you're adding value to make those improvements. And when you do that, they'll never leave you, and they'll send you referrals, and you'll have a very strong candidate and client base. So that really is the key, but ultimately it comes down to that relationship. But as we know, 
there are going to be questions, right? 100%, there are going to be questions and there are going to be objections. And just like any area of any business, you're gonna find that most of your objections are gonna fall into the same categories. So you're gonna learn how to address the most common questions or common objections. And if you can get really good at that, then you can handle just about any candidate because it's some form of the same objection. Um, so we're gonna go over some uh, responses to these objections and questions, but again, it's not scripted. It's just more of the philosophy or the methodology behind how you can address those objections. And, and really, objections and questions are actually buying signals. It shows that they are interested. They just need more clarification and more information. Uh, so your job is to further that conversation and ask more questions to get clarity to then offer the best response. And you'll see that the majority of these responses are all gonna come back to one major thing, and that's closing them into an appointment with the product specialist. Every question and every objection can be addressed and handled by scheduling an appointment with a product specialist. And that's great for you as a web center owner because it takes all the onus and all the pressure off of you. You simply get to be the liaison or the connector. So let's talk about one of the first objections that everyone always asks. Well, what, are they, what do I say when they ask about price, right? The candidate might say, so how much will this cost, right? How much is this gonna cost me? Here's the canned response that you wanna get really good at. That's a great question. In order to best address it, let's schedule a time with a specialist that can review that with you. They're the expert and I wouldn't want to mislead you. Again, it takes the uh, responsibility off of you and delegates it and push it to, pushes it onto a product specialist to handle, but most importantly what it did is it sold the appointment for you. That's where they're gonna get all the information anyways and ultimately that's what you want. You don't wanna get into talking about price because then you're actually now selling the product. You wanna get them in front of a product specialist because you're looking for ways to increase the value, right? The value proposition. And ultimately, it's the perceived value. value. What does the candidate perceive as the value that this product can bring to their business, right? And that's how they're gonna justify the price anyways. But if they ask you this and you haven't had a chance to really build up the value and talk about the features and benefits and to really address how it can improve their business in increasing revenue or decreasing expenses or streamlining business practices or increasing customer engagement or saving them time or saving them money, if you haven't done that, then there is going to be no value there that justifies the price. So no matter what cost or what price you present, it's not really going to make a difference. The most important thing that you can do is add value, and that's by offloading to the specialist. So you can then just close with a, what's the best time this week where I can schedule a call? Right. So if you take it off of yourself and really push back to the candidate and say, look, I don't know because this is not my expertise. My job is to build relationships with business owners that are looking for a way to improve their business. The specialist's job is to talk more in depth about how a website can help their business or to help the search engine optimization ranking or to use Google AdWords as a way to drive traffic. That's their expertise. So what I would like to do is put the three of us together and schedule a call where they can answer every question as well as propose the costs and, and how that can improve your business. How soon can we set that up? So you see what we're doing is we're letting them know that we heard them, that's a great question, and then we're, we're delegating to the appropriate party and connecting them, right? So again, how much is it? Another way to answer that same question is it wouldn't be fair of me to give you a price. Right? Quite honestly, it wouldn't be fair of me to give you a price until we actually know your specific needs and we don't have enough information to give you a, an idea of what that price might be. We've worked with tens of thousands of business owners all over the world to make it affordable for them. So I guarantee we can make something affordable for you. Otherwise, it's not going to be the solution for you. Right? So that's that, that disclaimer saying, look, we're not trying to just sell you something. If it's not a fit, it's okay. It's not a fit, but we don't have enough information right now to really propose a package that would be best for you. So why don't we do this? Why don't we use our specialists and they can develop a couple different packages and proposals that based around your budget, you can determine what's best for you. Right? And ideally, that's the best way to handle it. Now, they might follow that up with, well, can you give me an approximate cost? Right? Well, can you just kind of give me a... a, a a round figure, just kind of a ballpark that I'm looking at. 
And again, we really can't. It's going to depend on your particular needs. So let me do this. I'm going to have my corporate office put together a web package for you. You get to review it at no cost or obligation. We'll have a specialist answer your questions, show you some of the features and how it can help improve your business. And then you can make a more educated decision when you're at least busy that we could set that up. Again, always trying to let them know that they've been heard, adding in a, uh, an interest creating remark, and then trying to schedule the appointment with the specialist. That's going to be the ideal scenario on how to really um, answer that objection or that question. Now, a, a, another one that you can use is to focus on their uh, industry or their category, or just build a story or uh, create uh, an analogy. You know, ask them. You know, if I were to go to a restaurant and I was hungry, could I just go in and say, "How much is it going to cost for me to eat here?" Well, the answer is no, because it, 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 that's a silly question, and they'll understand that when you ask that, right? They say, well, how, how would you know how to build a, a price structure around what you're going to eat, your lunch? Well, it's going to depend on what you're drinking for a beverage. Are you having any refills? Is there an appetizer? Are you having a, a sandwich or a main entree? Are you splitting the meal with anyone? Are you having dessert? Are you having coffee? You see, all those things are going to build into the pricing. And right now, we don't have enough information to determine what that price might be. Now, you say approximate cost. Yeah, it's going to be somewhere between $100 and $10,000, right? That's not really going to give you a good idea of what's best for your business. So let's do this. Let's schedule a time with a product specialist, a web specialist, to go over everything that you need for your business. They'll quote your price, and we can work from there to see what's most important to you. How does that sound? Right. So the idea is maybe use their industry. Maybe they're a contractor and you can say, well, if someone wanted uh, their roof re, uh, refinished, how, how would you give them a quote? Well, you would need to know uh, the square footage. You would need to know the type of product or shingle or what kind of material building material. Um, is there any damage underneath the roof? Um, and then you're going to have to figure out how many nails right? What the crew is like, what the timing is, what the schedule is, right? That's all going to go into your quoting formula and we are no different. See, we can't just quote you a project and based on a price, just like you can't quote someone on a new roof. So let's do this. How about we get together, we'll put together a couple different packages that may fit your business and your needs that we've already talked about. They'll be able to answer the questions, answer your questions and propose a, a package that fits you for them. How does that sound? And you can use those what we call trial closing questions. Isn't that fair? Wouldn't you agree? Doesn't that sound good? You want them to say yes, right? How does that sound? Sounds good. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Doesn't it make sense? Yes. So let's put together an appointment. Wouldn't that make sense to you? Yes, right? It's that permission-based marketing to bring them along the path that you want them to go on, which is ultimately an appointment with the product specialist, right? How about this one? Can you send me some samples, right? Well, can you show me some of your work? Can you show me some samples? I can do you one better than that. Because we designed specifically to a client's wants or needs, I'd be happy to get you on a, a call with one of our product specialists to walk you through our technology and show you how it's going to build value for your business. We'll customize it for you there. When's the best time that we can set that up? Okay, again, offloading to the product specialist. Now, if they continue to push back and say, well, I just want to see your work. Okay, well, what's most important? The design elements and the, the creativity? Are you looking for the functionality? Are you looking for the types of buttons that we have, the forms, the feedback? You know, What part do you need to see samples of? You see, this isn't just about a brochure and how it looks. It's about the functionality. So what are you most intrigued about or what is most important to you before you can schedule an appointment, right? You really want to dig in and find out what are they looking for. If they're just looking for some designs, you can simply say, look, we can design something based on the client's needs. And it wouldn't be fair of me to show you a bunch of designs of designs that maybe you don't like, but our clients approved because that's what they were looking for, right? We build to need, so we customize it based on what you're looking for with our design team. How soon can I get you on uh, with one of our product specialists to talk to you about the website technology? Right? Again, offloading, letting them know they've been heard, and then move on to a product specialist appointment. Right? Or how about this smoke screen, I call it. Right? Could you send me something? Right? Oh, well, just send me something. You know, send me a text or send me an email. Can you just send me something? Well, again, same way to handle this. Right? Well, I can do one better than that. 
I'll have my office put together an entire web package for you to review at no cost or obligation and then have a specialist show you what we're doing to help companies just like yours. Or th then have a specialist show you what we're doing to help restaurants just like yours. Or have an appointment with a product specialist that will show you what we're doing to help auto repair facilities just like yours. Right? That is the ideal way to handle this because you're letting them know that we're working with companies just like their industry. We have some case studies and the specialists will be able to share those stories. Right? How about, well, I'm using a discount hosting company. Right? There's so many of them out there. Right? I'm using XYZ company. That's great. Congratulations. You're already getting started. You know that the most important thing is to start your online presence. If I could show you a way to save money and have a better online marketing strategy, uh, would you be interested? It's either going to be yes or no, right? No, I'm all set. Okay, fine. Or they might say, yeah, of course. Well, our system doesn't nickel and dime you. Would you like to learn more about that, right? There aren't all these added costs and fees every time that you want to add a page or make changes or things like that. Is that a concern of you that we've been able to help clients just like you save money on their online marketing? What works best for you, mornings or afternoons? And if you get used to our little buzz statement, right, we're an all-inclusive digital marketing strategy. Well, it's great that you've got a website already started. You know, my company actually creates an entire online marketing strategy to help businesses like yours. So it's more than just a website. It's really about how to drive traffic and increase sales and decrease revenue. Is any of that important to you or are you just happy with your website the way it is now? Let them answer. Maybe it's an opportunity for social media. Are you currently leveraging social media? Do you have someone managing your Google advertising? Right, you might have to ask a couple more questions to see if there's, there's a way that you can help provide a solution. Now, if not, that's fine. Do I have your permission to follow up with you in, in a couple months? I'd like to stay on top of this and see how things are going for you. And if there's a way that I can help in the meantime and something comes up on your end, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'd love to help you out, right? So is every candidate going to be 100% chance to overcome an objection and schedule an appointment? No, that's not reality. But we've got to try, right? You've got to try three, four, or five times to overcome questions and objections to really cut through what their smoke screens might be, right? What they say is the objection to find the underlying objection, what the real reason is. It might be as simple as I like my website, right? Well, that's great. What do you like about it? Is there anything it's not doing that you wish it were doing? Right? Even with those discount hosting companies, great, I'm glad that you got a good start. What do you like best about it? Great. Does it have anything that you wish it would do that it's not currently doing? Or how are you driving traffic to that site? So again, it always comes back to answering their question, but then asking a question, not only just to overcome it, but, but really to build a relationship, right? As we know, it's going to build credibility and trust and value the more you can uncover and work with them. Okay? How about this one? My friend or family is creating a site for me. Perfect, congratulations, they'll love this. Our technology helps designers in several ways and it also saves business owners a lot of time, money, and frustration. What I'd love to do is schedule a time with one of our product specialists to put together an entire web package for you and we can have your friend or family member on with us because I know that you trust them and respect their opinion, isn't that correct? How soon can we set that up for you? Right? Or another question is just to find out, right, they're creating a site for you. How long have they been working on it? Right? And they've been working on it for a long time. What seems to be the challenge? What seems to be the holdup? Is there anything that's that's slowing it down? Is there any reason why it's not online sooner? Right? You can dig and ask more questions to really identify the potential problem. And then we have nowadays a lot of companies say, oh no, we use we just use social media. Well, great. You want to commend them for using social media, right? That's great. Social media is an excellent way to get your name out there and interact with your customers, right? Give them a pat on the back. Give them the high five. It's a, yeah, great. Kudos to you. Good job. You're doing something that's going to help your business. But then you need to uncover it. Where are you funneling all that buzz to? Is your website helping capture those leads? Maybe they don't have a website. We're using uh, our Facebook channel exclusively. Great. You know, obviously, word of mouth uh, is the number one form of advertising, and using social media is, is similar to that, so I commend you. How are people that don't know about you or your product finding you? Right? And that's a great question, because if someone's just searching for a product or service, they're not using Facebook, and they're not going to find a company that they don't know about. They're going to go to a search engine. Right? So are you capturing any of that traffic from the search engines? Right? If people are looking for your product or service in this area, are they able to find you online? Right? And you might know that because you've done your discovery. You've done your, um, your research. 
and you'll know that they either do or don't rank on Google, right? So by answering the question, commending them, you can then ask another question to dig a little further, right? And find out, oh, well, well, we used to have a website. Oh, well, what was wrong with it? Or, or why did you stop it? Or was it not working for you? What, what was the reason you uh, felt that you didn't need a website any longer? Right here it is, 2020. Every business should have an online presence and, and a website to to drive traffic, and there's never been a more relevant topic than that. Right? Okay. So you want to sell the problem that you want to solve, and if you keep the conversation focused on their challenges, then setting the appointment is easy. And you might have to ask them, well, what what challenges do you face? It's great that you're using social media, but are you having any challenges either with social media or with your online marketing? Is it driving enough business for you? Right. And always, always, always the solution to that problem is an appointment. Right. An appointment is where they're going to discover ways to solve their challenges. And it's best if you can leverage our product specialists. So now in this process, um, you're you're either talking to a decision maker or you're talking to someone in the company. And these questions or challenges may come up or objections. But then there's also the chance that you can't even get to the decision maker because there's someone standing in your way. And that person we call the gatekeeper, right? It's an attendant at a gate, a business organization whose job it is to control who goes through it, right? They're the gatekeeper. Your job is to find a way to get through that gatekeeper to speak with the decision maker or the other influencers in that business. Now, it's very, very important that we don't treat them just like a gatekeeper that is a, a limiting factor between you and meeting the decision maker or closing a sale, right? These are human beings. These are people. So we want to encourage you to build relationships with them because they're getting solicitations nonstop each and every day. So when you contact uh, a business and you get a gatekeeper either in person or on the phone or even an email or a voicemail as a form of a gatekeeper, ultimately uh, they are asking, who are you? and what are you selling, right? So you need to ask yourself, do you appear or sound like a salesperson, right? They're thinking, why are you here and what do you want, right? Why are you here, why are you calling, what do you want, why are you taking my time? And the same time, they're trying to judge whether or not they should let you through the gate or if they're just gonna say we're not interested or uh, the decision maker is not available or try and call back another time. They're going to try and push back, and that's their job. Their job is to save their decision makers time, right? If there's, if there's one thing that's the most valuable to any small to medium-sized business owner, it's time, right? Time is so valuable to them, and they can't waste their time uh, if there's unqualified appointments that have no relevance to their business. And the gatekeeper's job is to uh, push back. Right. So they are subconsciously thinking, how long should I listen to you? Or if you're in person, when can I politely usher you out of the establishment? Right. And that's what they're thinking. Right. How long do I have to listen before I can just push you away? So you need to do a really good job of making them feel important and special and build a relationship with them. So the gatekeeper screens calls and visitors um, and really deflects the ones that they feel are not important. Right now, how can they determine what their business needs? Now, in some respects, they know more about the business than anyone else. They know the other vendors. They know the other um, sales reps from other companies. They know all the clients and customers. They know all the, the coworkers and employees. They know the business owners. They know the shareholders. They probably know more about the business than anyone else would give them credit for. Right. So it's very important to make friends with them and make them your ally because they will share some important information. Right. So they are people and your job is to build relationships with as many people in the establishment or in that business as possible. So how can you do that? Number one, be different. Number two, be consistent and persistent, but not pushy. Number three, be personable, be friendly. Right. So the most important thing you can do is be a person and have a conversation, right? Connect with them, engage with them, dump the script. There's no perfect script. Learn their names and refer to them by their names. I didn't catch your name. What is your name? Susie? Susie, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you. My name is Jason, right? You want to start that relationship building. Learn their names and refer to their names when you're conversing with them. When you call back, 
Hi, Susie. So nice to, to uh, hear from you again. My name is Jason. We met last week, right? Mention their name. When you go in and you say, Susie, I, I remember the last time that we spoke, you mentioned, right? By saying their name, you are planting a seed subconsciously that is building a relationship. You're building value and you're building trust in that relationship. You're more likely to, at that point, have that warm connection and be relatable. Now, if you have a connection and a reason why you, you need to state that, right? I'm a customer, I'm a colleague, I was referred by, or so-and-so asked me to give you a call. You need to do that because it's gonna buy you another eight to 10 seconds to get through that next phase, right? Your job is to continue to build that relationship. Assume that they can be the one to help you, right? Are you the one to speak to about this? Are you the one to speak to about uh, marketing for the company? You might find that you, uh, you assume that they are an office administrator, an office manager, yet it could be the decision maker, right? So you don't want to do anything to alienate that relationship, or maybe they're not the decision maker, but they're highly influential. Maybe it's the spouse, maybe it's a family member of the decision maker. You never know. So you, won't, you don't want to say, you know, who, who should I speak to? It's like, are you the one to speak to? right? Give them that opportunity to answer and give you more information, right? You can ask a question like, are you the supervisor? Are you the manager? Do you handle marketing decisions? And make them feel important, make them feel special. Because at the end of the day, right, they know that they are a very important part of that establishment and that business, uh, but they typically aren't getting credit for all that they know and all that they do. So when you can come in and most other sales professionals are trying to blast right past them and try and get to the decision maker and trying to sell their product and pitch their product, you can be different by building a relationship with them and then leverage their knowledge, right? Ask for their advice. When do you think a better time to call would be? Is it better to call before or after lunch? What do you think? What's the best way for me to um, actually reach uh, so and so, right? Now, if I were to call back, do you think that they'll actually pick up the phone, right? If I left the, should I put you to put, should I put you to voicemail? Well, let me ask you before you do that. If I do leave a voicemail, what's the likelihood that I'm going to get a return phone call? Well, they actually just have me go through the voicemails anyways. Okay. So what is the best method to contact? Would an email be better? How can I introduce myself? Or can you do an introduction for me, right? You want to use that uh, relationship that you're building as a way to uh, gather intel about the business as well, right? Well, if you ran the place, right, or if you were to make some changes, what would be the first thing that you did, right? How busy are you? Are you looking for more customers? Or do you have too many customers and you're trying to streamline some of the business practices, right? Where do you see the, the biggest area for improvement for the company, right? So when you make them feel important, you ask those types of questions, they're going to want to share that with you. And then you say, well, I think I might have a solution. Would you be able to refer me to the person that could make that kind of decision and I can reference that we spoke and that you've got some great ideas, right? You want to make sure that you're giving them credit where credit is due and stay polite at all costs. What, can I say 100% of the conversations you're going to have are going to be pleasant? No, this is the real world and everyone's going through something that we know nothing about, right? It could be a bad day, could be something happening uh, internally, could be something happening at home, could be something happening personally and they might react a certain way or they just might be, maybe they have been dealing with sales professionals all day, right? Um, we don't know what's happening. So just be professional, maintain your uh, posture and your composure, simply thank them for their time and, and ask them to follow up, right? So the idea is if you can just maintain that professionalism, that will go a long, long way because they'll remember that and timing changes. You might call back in a month and maybe that person is gone. Right? Maybe the, per the key personnel that was holding you back is now no longer with the company. Or maybe they, you know, something was happening in their life that now has passed. Or maybe you found out that you know, they're in the middle of planning a wedding and everything is going wrong and the florist just canceled and the DJ uh, you know, messed up the playlist and then a flight was canceled for the, the bridesmaid. Right? When you call, even though it has nothing to do with the business, they are going to be stressed, right? If you uncover that type of information, the next time you call, you say, I hope everything worked out with the wedding, right? 
just remembering that and asking about it or bringing it up is going to add more value in the relationship. And again, the relationship is the most important thing. And of course, follow up, right? It's a first contact. It's not your only contact. And you remember that from our follow-up session that it's ideally all about the follow-up and that most sales professionals do not follow up. So be different by following up consistently, right? And keep good notes so it's going to make your follow-ups more effective. So it really is in your best interest to make friends with the gatekeepers. Stop cold calling and making and start making quality contacts, right? Gatekeepers have a job of keeping cold callers away. So one way to avoid rejection is to work with your hot leads instead or to build relationships with them. So, you know, when we talk about cold calling, we're not going to just take a list of 400 businesses and dial them one after the other trying to make an appointment. It's an ineffective use of your time. Okay. However, if it's a local business and you have that contact, but you don't really have uh, a relationship with anyone in the, the business, you can call and establish that relationship. And one way to do that in that connection is how do you know that business? Are you a patron? Are you a customer, right? Are you friends with someone there? Was it a referral? Or maybe it's that you own a business. You're a business owner in the area. And that is not a lie. You are an unfranchised business owner. You're a web center owner. So you are a business owner. And being a business owner, you would like to network and meet other business owners in the area. That's a great introduction to build the relationship. Now, you not, might not set a demo appointment from that, but building that relationship and that conversation is going to be very, very important. So really hot leads really are referrals from someone inside the company or someone inside the company's network. And this is why your who do you know that works for a small or medium sized business names list, your candidate list is so valuable, right? When you say, oh, I was talking to my, my friend and they recommended I give them a call or I know someone who you know happens to play ball with you know, the marketing manager and they asked me to give them a call, right? Or if you have that person give you a referral and say, hey, can you make a, a warm introduction to the decision maker? Those hot leads are going to be much easier for you to work with and a more effective and efficient use of your time. Now, be clear what to say to gatekeepers. Being short and sweet can work on a voicemail, but it's not necessarily the case when you're talking with a gatekeeper, right? You don't want to be terse. You don't want to be short. You want to establish a connection, right? So be specific. Once you've established a little bit of rapport, let them know precisely and exactly why you're there. The reason I'm calling is, and I like to use that phrase, the reason I'm calling is because it's very direct and it makes them pay attention. They know that you just made a statement, a precursor that makes them say, okay, I better pay attention to why they're calling. Right. That way they don't have time or they're going to transfer any vague callers. They're not going to send you to the decision maker um, if they don't know why you're calling. Right. Establish that you're not a cold caller. And that's, you know, your interest creating remark. But it's also how you know them. Right. Are you also a small business owner in town? Are you a patron of the business? Are you a referral? How are you related? That lets them know that you're not a cold caller. Right. And integrity matters. Let them know that you aren't trying to sell them anything. You're not looking for any time. You're just looking for a conversation. Right. You're not even sure it's a good fit. The only way you know that is if you have a conversation and you're just looking for maybe 10 minutes of their time. Not now, but when is the best time to call back? Right. And once you know the business owner's name, ask for their name directly. When you call and you know the business owner's name, just call and ask uh, when they answer the phone. You know, this is X, Y, Z landscaping. Great. Is Bill available? Right. You have a higher chance of just getting through to Bill if you know Bill's name than if um, you just say, oh, I was hoping to speak with the, the business owner. Right. That lets them know that you don't really know them. So the gatekeeper's job is to hold you back. OK, so if you already know it, then use it. If not, it could be a two part process. You might call, get some information in your research. You might find out who the business owner is and ask by name and follow up. Right. The next time you call back, you could ask for the business owner's name. Now, the other thing about this is that if you ask for the business owner's name and they say, oh, they're not available, would you like their voicemail? You can say, yeah, or you can say, well, let me ask, when is a better time to reach them? Right. It might be better to try and reach them rather than leaving a voicemail. And think to yourself how often you actually listen to the voicemails versus just waiting for a callback. OK, so you might even say, can I shoot a quick email? Right. Whatever the best method is, so you're not playing phone tag or a voicemail tag is to get a live conversation happening. So let's talk a little bit about voicemails, right? Voicemails 101. Create a reason for them to call you back. 
right? Maybe pick one thing from your research to drop in a positive way, like an interest creating remark or some other warm connection you may have. You know, we met last week or I met you at the ballpark or I was talking uh, to uh, my girlfriend at the gym last week and she mentioned your name, right? Some way to create um, a reason for calling back, establish some type of trust there. Right. Use their name in the message before you introduce yourself. Hi, Bill. Right. And using Bill as the example. Right. Hi, Bill. This is Jason. We met last week at the chamber event. I'm looking uh, to, to um, find time where we can catch a cup of coffee. Right. Or whatever it might be. Now, say your phone number twice so they can write it down accurately. You know, if you leave your phone number, hi. Uh, Bill, this is Jason. We met at the Chamber event last week. Just hoping for a call back. My number is 555-555-5555. I'm looking forward to a call. I'll talk to you soon. Again, my phone number is 555-555-5555 because they're probably not writing it down the first time and they're probably not going to rewind it uh, and, and listen to the voicemail again. So if you say it two times, they're more likely to catch it that second time. Okay. Never, ever, ever state that you will call them back because then they've got no reason to call you back. They'll just wait for you to follow up and call back, right? It's almost like they can disregard that voicemail. So never say, hey, Bill, this is Jason. We met at the chamber event. I'll try and reach you tomorrow. If you want to give me a call, my number is because they won't call back, right? Um, hey, uh, sorry, I missed you. Uh, I'll just, I'll give you a call after lunch. Well, then they're not going to call back, right? So don't state that you will call back. And if you do by accident because it's habitual, then make sure you follow up. Put it in your schedule and actually call back because the other problem people have is that they say that in a message and then they never call back. So, of course, nothing's going to happen, okay? So when people are going into the office and you're calling a business that is open, um, the best times to call is before the, the business actually opens, right? Slightly before opening time, maybe 7 to 8 a.m. if you're just trying to catch someone. Certainly the decision maker uh, is usually there in the office early uh, before their day starts. They're busy operating their business from 8 to 5-ish, right? So it might not be best to call them during the day. Um, and you might have a better chance calling them after hours, right? After the business closes, call them right at the, the close of business. Um, and in some cases, calling them on a weekend, right? Trying to catch their ear. They might be catching up on voicemails at that time. So there's no like right or wrong time to do it. And you'll, you'll know certain industries and when the best times to call are. Uh, and that comes from practice. But the idea is any time that you think you can reach the decision maker, just do it. Um, if you end up finding that you're calling at the same time and you're always leaving a voicemail, well, change it up and try it a different time, okay? Now, if you're calling outside of a time zone, make sure that you keep those time zones in mind uh, with those recommendations. Your voicemail should be short, sweet, and to the point, under 15 seconds. In fact, if you want an almost guaranteed callback, the best voicemail you can leave is, hi, Bill, this is Jason. You can reach me at 555-555-5555. Looking forward to hearing from you. That's almost a guaranteed callback. They don't know why you're calling. They might not even know who you are, but you called, you knew their name, you said your name, and you left your phone number. Okay? Great way to get a phone call back. Now, you have to be careful because now it's on their schedule and they might catch you off guard. They'll call you back. And when you answer it, you have to be ready. Hey, the reason why I called was, right? I'm calling you back. I got your voicemail, Jason, um, just yesterday. How can I help you? Oh, Bill, so glad that you were able to reach me. Uh, the reason I called yesterday is, and then you've got to have your, your contact, your approach. So if you let it go back to voicemail, now guess what? Now you're going to have to call them back and they're going to have to call you back. So be ready, be prepared, be on your toes and know what you're going to say. If you're new, just have it on an index card, right? Have it written on you um, so that you can refresh that if you need to and, and reference it. Okay. So don't sell be different, build a relationship, and always be focused on the consultation or the product specialist. You know, if you're concerned about objections, you're concerned about gatekeepers, you're concerned about voicemails, um, the only way to overcome that is to experience it. So we can't train you exactly what to say. It really is experiential learning. So you're going to have to go out there and make some phone calls. You're going to have to handle some objections. You're going to have to get some questions. You're going to have to leave some voicemails. 
and you will come into your own as you do this, right? Um, I think the best way to hone your skills is through numbers and practice. That can be either live calls or even role playing. Whatever you need to do to be comfortable, uh, to increase your confidence and your competence is going to be good for you. Uh, the idea is maybe even do this with a partner, like you've done call workshops in the past, do the same thing for your web center business, team up with another web center owner, um, do some role playing. The idea is that you're never going to improve the skill if you don't practice the skill. So the most important thing that we always come back to is take action, right? Nothing can go wrong and you're going to fail your way forward um, through this process. I know it's scary for some people that have never done that, but you can't guarantee that you're going to get 100% of the candidates to become clients of yours. So there is going to be a, a, a bit of rejection to this, but your job is to learn from every opportunity, improve yourself, and, and, and continue to follow up, and continue to follow up, continue to build relationships, and this will work for you. This will ultimately create a massive success story for you if you just follow the five C's and follow the proven system that has been laid in front of you by countless of others that have really just followed this um, proven system of selling web solutions. So don't be afraid of the questions. Don't be afraid of the objections. If you stumble a little bit and you, and you fumble and stutter, that's okay. It's part of it. And you have any questions, reach out to us. You've got support system. You've got certified trainers. Uh, you've got the Web Center Owner Support Group. Uh, and if anything really comes up, you can always email us and we can reference you back to sales support or someone at MA Web Centers. But if there are some specific objections or, or challenges that come up, send us an email, mawebcenters at marketamerica.com, and we will point you in the right direction for a resource or answer your question or give you some best practices. But the most important thing that you can do is get yourself to the training. You know, we've got these weekly online trainings, you've got the videos, but nothing replaces the WCT 101 and WCT 201. So make sure you schedule that as soon as possible. Look in your GMTSS. I know there are many that are happening that you can get plugged into. And by doing that, you're going to be connected with a bunch of other great web center owners and answer all your questions and really take that first step forward to succeeding in your web center business.